Non-seafaring plants can include bryophytes and pteridophytes like mosses, hornworts, liverworts and fern. These types of plants have spores instead of seed and conserving them can be straightforward or require specialist techniques. In this video, Tom North from the Australian National Botanic Gardens, Canberra, shares their techniques for conserving fern spores. So in terms of conservation of non-seed bearing plants, um, it's really important that we understand at what stage those plants are at um, in order to be able to collect the material that we're interested in conserving. So um, mostly it's easier if we're collecting spores and for that we need the plants to be at the sporophyte stage where they're producing sporangia um, and the spores are encapsulated within the sporangia. We've got a fern frond here with um, frondlets and pinules on it um, that's got sporangia on the back of it. So what we're looking for is just to make sure that those sporangia are mature and ready to release the spore and that they've actually haven't already released or that they're too green and immature. So I'm just going to have a look. Um, so we've got sporangia on the, on the margins of these pinules here um, that are just about ripe and ready to collect. So I'm just going to sterilise um, the secateurs. The other thing we need to do is make a record of um, what we're collecting, where we're collecting it, um, who collected it and the date and given an individual collecting number. Now to collect into, um, I'm using just um, a heavy brown paper bag. Um, we wouldn't use plastic because um, of the risk of building up static and trying to get spore out of that, but also the risk of um, uh, cultivating mould um, on the spores or the fronds um, that we've collected. We're just going to collect the frondlets. So we're only taking about 10% um, from this and then a sample across all the ferns in the population. Fronds are kept flat between two clean sheets of paper and secured in a plant press for drying over 24 hours. Sporangia on the frond will dry within 24 hours to release the spores if collected when ripe. So the next step is then to just sieve that collection through quite fine sieves. What I've chosen here is um, two sieve sizes just to get rid of um, the extra large any um, frond material that's still there and then um, a smaller sized sieve under that to just collect any of the sporangia material that's going to go through as well. So it's just a light sieve and tap through then that spore should all go down through that top sieve and I've got just a little bit of material there left on the top that's non-spore and again that can be discarded and then with the finer sieve again it's just tapping down and then checking as well um, under your um, Maggie lamp or a microscope just to check that what is left in that sieve is um, the sporangia material or debris um, and not actually spore. And your spore should all be in your lower or collection tray at the base there. The spore that I've just um, processed there looks like it's uh, non-chloriferous, um, which means it's got um, quite orthodox uh, storage characteristics. Um, we'll dry that at uh, between 10-25% relative humidity. Uh, so you've got a couple of options there in terms of storage. Um, probably the preferred method is um, to go into a glassine um, envelope um, where the seed can dry down, the spore can dry down um, to appropriate level. Um, but at the moment um, I'll transfer this into a glass vial um, to go into our dry room for a couple of days to desiccate 
to appropriate levels. So just to do that um, and just tap that into not so And we'll leave the lid off that in the dry room so that it has a chance to dry down. Drying time varies depending on the type of spores you are collecting. For non-chloriferous spores, it can take between five and seven days. Chloriferous spores can take between one and three days. You can find further information about drying times on page 407 of the guidelines. Once it's been in the dry room for a couple of days, we'll assess moisture within the collection, but also test the viability before we then shift that into minus 20 degrees. All the information about collection and conservation of spores is included in chapter 13 of the guidelines, which can be downloaded for free.